Good morning, dear students. I hope you all are fine. Students, before starting our class today, I would like to read this in front of you. And after that, I would like to tell you what I want to say. I was raised to show respect. I was taught to knock before I open a door. Say hello when I enter a room. Say please and thank you and to have respect for my elders. I would let another person have my seat if they need it. Say yes sir and no sir and help others when they need me to. Not stand on the sidelines and watch. Hold the door for the person behind me. Say excuse me when it's needed and to love people for who they are and not for what can I can get from them. And most importantly, I was raised to treat people exactly how I would like to be treated be, have, uh, be others. It's called respect. Students, we all are raised up. Raised up means we all are brought up. We all got the moral values from our school, from our parents, from our elders that we have to give respect to our elders. If we give respect, that will show our personality what kind of person we are and what kind of environment we are having. If we are not giving respect to our elders, that will not only humiliate ourselves but also our parents, our teachers, our school too. Because from there we are getting all these etiquettes. I know you are very good students and you know how to treat your elders by giving respect and I would like to add one more thing students the teachers who are teaching you it is not like that that you will give respect to only that teachers those teachers you have to give respect to other teachers those who are not teaching you right if somebody comes to your place and if you don't know and if he or she is elder to you, you give respect. That is what we are teaching you. Lectures, lessons, everything will remain aside. The most important thing is the moral values that we are, incul we are trying to inculcate in your side so that we you and your parents should be proud of yourself so today our class will begin with the respect that we promise to each other that my students will give respect to their elders not only teachers but to your parents too they are doing a lot for you they are paying fees so that you can f achieve whatever you want and be the successful person in your life and first most importantly independent in your life so give respect to your elders that is what we are teaching you. We, the team of St. Kabir Public School, wants you to be the best student of Haryana. Not only Karnal, best student of Haryana. 
so let's start today's class take out your english grammar book we'll do chapter 6 verbs i'm giving you 2 minutes take out your english grammar book chapter 6 verbs non finite forms infinitive gerund and participle students you all have done uh, verbs in your previous classes from the class 1 you are doing verbs and you all know verbs are the action words exactly verbs are the action words and we read about transitive verb intransitive verb in uh, verbs of incomplete predication or linking verbs but in you are now in 8th standard and now we have to raise our level so a new concept of verbs we are going to read in this chapter and it is very interesting if you listen to me very carefully and attentively so verbs are the action words now we are going to study about finite and non finite verbs okay so let's take the example first and then with the help of example i'll tell you the difference between finite verbs and infinite verbs the girl is reading the girl wants to read i found the girl reading and reading is a good habit these are the four sentences right in sentence 1 the verb is is reading the verb is is reading and it is limited by the number and person of its subject the girl okay now this sentence the girl is reading here the verb is is reading and it is having a subject the girl okay now the girl is a subject and is reading is a verb which is having its subject the girl and an auxiliary verb that is is okay so when the verb is limited by the number and person of its subject that is a finite verb in short if there is an auxiliary verb that is helping verb is a mar is a helping verb right is is a helping verb and reading is the reading is the verb reading is a verb with the ing form right now it is having a subject that is the girl and the verb is agreed with the subject in number and person number is single girl is there so we use singular singular verb okay and person is the girl is the person here single person here okay single person and it's singular in number so it is uh, using singular verb so the verb which which is limited by the number and person of its subject that is a finite verb in short it has a subject and it also uh, has a auxiliary verb or you can say helping verb now in sentence 2 3 and 4 the verbs to read reading and reading in third and fourth the verb is reading reading okay in these uh, second third and fourth sentence they are these verbs they do not uh, they are not limited by the number and person of its subject in short they are not having the subject right okay and these are called when they are not limited by the number and person of its subject they are the non finite verbs they are the non finite verbs okay so finite verb is limited by the number and person of its subject and non finite verbs are derived from a verb but has a no subject and they are not limited by the number and person of any noun or pronoun okay so with this the chapter is started with the three types of non finite verbs non finite verbs is further or of three types infinitive gerund and participle 
okay now see the second example the girl wants to read now to read is a verb here here to read is a which kind of non finite verb it is a infinitives infinitives where it is followed by to the verb is followed by to it is used before the verb that is to steal to drink to write okay and third one is i found the girl reading i found the girl reading is a now here reading stealing drinking writing it is a it is a yes any idea it is a yes try yeah I, i found the girl reading here reading is a participle and fourth one is reading is a good habit here in fourth sentence the reading is a gerund now the difference between the two i will tell you because in third and fourth both verbs are reading but we are classifying it under as gerund and participle okay that i will tell you now one more thing i would like to tell you non finite verbs they don't have a subject and they don't contain a auxiliary verb or you can say helping verb this is the second way to identify whether the verb is finite or in non finite finite will have a subject and a helping verb right and non finite they don't have a subject and helping verb and they are not limited by the number and person of noun or pronoun so we will be starting with infinitives today okay today we will be studying about infinitives as i told you infinitive is uh, followed by to to steal to drink to write all these are the present infinitives and if we want to write in the past form past uh, sorry perfect form perfect infinitives will be written as to have stolen perfect form may we will use the third form of the verb to have stolen to have drunk to have written okay and third part uh, sorry second participle as i told you stealing drinking writing these are the present participle past participle will use the third form as you know present past and past participle stolen drunken and written here we use to have to have with the infinitives but here in the participle we just use stolen drunk and written okay so don't get confused now gerund is stealing drinking and writing now present participle form and gerund they have the same form ing form and i told you how to uh, identify the difference between the two see here now here their functions are quite different participle is partly a verb it is half a verb and half a adjective it is half a verb and half a adjective whereas gerund is half a verb partly a verb and partly a noun okay as you see in the third example i found the girl reading here it is playing the role of uh, playing half the role of a verb or half the role of a adjective whereas gerund in the fourth sentence reading is used as a gerund where it is playing the role of a verb and noun as it is the subject of the sentence that is reading is a good habit so it is used as subject or you can say half noun it is you uh, you used as a half noun okay so i hope the difference between the participle and gerund form is clear to you either they have the same form ing form but participle plays the role of a verb and adjective and gerund plays the role of a verb and a noun okay likewise you have to do the exercise 1 we are have here you have to underline the finite verb and circle the non finite verbs 
okay finite means which contain subject and helping verb and non finite they don't have a subject they are not limited by the number and pers uh, number and person of a noun or pronoun and they don't contain a auxiliary verb now see walking is a good exercise now here walking is a gerund right so it, it comes under non finite verb so we will go, we are going to circle it the cows are grazing in uh, grazing in the field now are grazing is a verb here and here it contains the auxiliary verb so it is a finite verb likewise you have to do the exercise 1 now we'll study more about infinitives today now infinitives as i told you they are followed by to so they play the role of a subject of a verb object of a verb and a complement of a verb now see the different examples i want to play now here to play is the object of the verb want to steal is a crime here to steal is a subject of a verb is the principal asked me to go now here to go is the complement okay her aim is to become an engineer to become is the complement here so infinitive infinitive they act as a noun it can be subject or object of the verb it may also the complement of the verb or object okay now infinitive they are also known as to verb as it is followed by to right to verb they are also known as to verb or it can also used without to it can also used without to you can see the first two example where infinitives are used followed by to and in the third and fourth examples infinitives are used uh, infinitives are used without to she wants to play you ought to have played in a third example they can play cricket very well i made early finish the work okay now next now when an infinitive is used without to then then they are known as bare infinitive okay now uh, in what cases uh, the infinitives are used without to let's discuss first is after the verb we are not going to use to that infinitives are not going to used followed by to when there is uh, these helping verbs are there in the sentence like do did will shall would should may might can could must all these are the auxiliary verbs here in this case we are not going to use to with the infinitives okay you shall accept my proposal i will teach him a lesson you should consult a doctor you must do it she can sing i can lift this box okay in the second case after some verbs we use infinitive without to for example bit feel hear know watch notice see let make dare need ask advise allow beg command ex expect enable set imagine like order tell wish and want with these verbs we are not going we are going to use infinitives without to let me try this sum i heard her sing bid him go there i noticed him i noticed him coming out of the cinema hall i felt something cold touch my leg so these are the examples where infinitives are used without to the use of infinitives sorry the use of to infinitives with dare and need in the following sentences you dared to disobey me but she dare not disobeyed me you need to go there but you need not go there it should be clear if we retain to in positive sentence but we drop it in negative sentence see the first part she dare to disobey me here it is positive but she dare not disobey me here it is in the negative form but here we are not using to okay <clears throat> so we drop it uh, to in the negative form but we use it in the positive form we use infinitive with to in the positive sentence 
especially in the uh, word especially with the words like dear and need then if there is than two will be omitted two before the infinitives will be omitted if there is than in the sentence she can dance better than sing the child did not more did did no more than cry he would do nothing but sit idle so wherever than is there but is there we are not going to use the infinitives with to okay without to we are going to use the infinitives now we use the infinitives without to after these expressions like had better would rather die sooner than had sooner had ra- had rather than okay so with these expressions also we are going to use the infinitives without to look at the use of infinitives in these sentences to go there is not safe to travel without a ticket is an offense to cheat in test is not proper to eat street food is unhealthy now these sentences are grammatically correct but they are slightly awkward we can make them elegant if we write them in a following order it is not safe to go there it is an offense to travel without a it is an offense to travel without a ticket it is not proper to cheat in test it is unhealthy to eat street food okay so i hope it is clear to you exercise 6 it is related to that we have to use it and we have to make the sentence elegant like to live without air and water is impossible so how will you write using it it is impossible to live without air and water second it is a pleasure to talk to her third it is foolish of you to defy your employer then it is really difficult to serve two masters it is a sin to steal okay so i hope this exercise 6 is clear to you that how you have to solve it in the coming to the next part the use of infinitive with a verb to t w o to okay now here see the example the room is very small this room is very small it cannot accommodate all the furniture now here you can write it this room is so small that it cannot accommodate all the furniture here you add two more words that is so and that okay if we use the adverb how will you compact the sentence compact means compress shorten the sentence how will you this room is too small to accommodate all the furniture here we use two to one is t double o and second is t o okay with this we are able to compact our sentences like exercise 8 is related to that this coffee is very hot i cannot drink it how will you compact it this coffee is too hot to drink it okay this shirt is too costly for me to afford it you are too late first t double o will come and then t o you are too late to reach the school in time the teacher is too gentle to control the class he is too ill to go to school today so i hope use of adverb t double o or and t o is clear to you to make the sentence compact okay next is use of infinitive to make the sentence compact again how we are you going to use to here now see we were shocked when we heard the sad news how will you compact the sentence we were shocked to hear the sad news you will have to work hard if you want to stand first in the class you will have to work hard to stand first in the class this is the compact form of the sentence where you can reduce the length of the sentence using to infinitives this we are discussing infinitives okay so with this i hope the use of infinitive using adverb t w o and 
the use of inf uh, this infinitive in compacting the sentence is clear to you i'll take one more example it was said that mr ambani was a great industrialist this will be written as mr ambani was said to be a great industrialist mr gupta was the only member who gave a sensible proposal mr gupta was the only member to gave us to give gave will become give here first form will come when we compact the sentence keep this thing in mind gave will become give to give a sensible proposal okay so next is joining the pair of sentences using infinitives infinitive is followed by two with the verb two verbs infinitives as i told you it is also known as two verb so here we are going to use two right see the example she had no money she could not buy bread now here we are going to join these two sentences by using infinitives like she had no money to buy bread the director called a meeting he wanted to discuss the annual report the director called a meeting to discuss the annual report i heard the news of her untimely death i was shocked so i was shocked to hear heard will become hear to hear the news of her untimely death okay so i hope with this uh, the use of infinitives is clear to you with related to that you have to solve the exercise if any doubt is there you are free to ask any time infinitives are very very easy they are followed by two so i today what uh, we quickly recap what we had done today we discussed verbs are of two types finite and non finite finite is the verb which is limited by the number and person of the subject and it has a auxiliary verb or you can say helping verb it has a subject but non finite verbs they don't have a subject and they are uh, they are not limited by the number and person of a noun or pronoun non finite verbs are further or of three types infinitives current and participial today we discussed infinitives infinitives are followed by uh, two and they are also known as two verbs okay and then we discuss the use of infinitives to compact the sentences right so with this i would like to end the class have a nice day and take care and give respect to everyone give respect take respect thank you